Well, they sure would enjoy their stays at the Outrigger Hotels. We can attest to that. Heat 2B is ready on the water. Let's take a look at the lineup. And here are the competitors in lanes one, two, and three. The Miss Sprint hometown boat had a fire last heat. They're not going to make it. Cherry Hop explains their problems. We did hurt the engine, and, and uh, we've done some damage to cables and stuff in the boat. And uh, the crew's going to work like crazy. We're going to try and get back in this race. Well, it's going to be a tough uh, haul, no question about that. But they won't make the start of Heat 2B, which is happening right now on the water. There's the tide boat leading them across as they get the flag to go. So the tide boat, Nate Brown is your leader on the outside. Ken Muscatel is charging hard. Now here's inside the Miss T Plus looking back at the driver, Steve David. He's bouncing around there in the turn as that skid fin controls the boat and holds it on the water. And then all of a sudden he smooths out. Here's why he's on the straightaway. But you can see why he's so concentrated. He's right off the right hip of the Tide Outrigger Hotels boat driven by Nate Brown. And both boats are over 153 mile an hour here on this three lap sprint with Ken Muscatel in the Superior Racing third. As we look at our leader coming out the turn and here comes a challenge once again by the T plus. Well, if there's any good news for the Miss Sprint team, which has had nothing but problems so far at this day in Pearl Harbor, it's perhaps Ken Muscatel's boat. He had a terrible day in San Diego, and here he is riding in third and only about five to six boat lanes back. But the real battle is up front, where the Tide Outrigger Hotel's boat is in the lead on the turn as they go to the outside. Steve David and the Miss T Plus still trying to find that straightaway speed. That's where he's got to catch him. Here he is coming up. You can see the air intake just over the rooster tail of the Miss T Plus. The Tied Outrigger Hotel's boat is the boat he's aiming at. That's the boat that's in the lead now. They've got another lap to go, so it's going to be neck and neck battle down the straightaways into the turns. We'll see which boat can take it. Look at Nate Brown as he comes out. It's almost like a slingshot. We'll see if he holds it, but he's been shooting in front of him. There he takes about a boat length and a half on him. They're both averaging over 153 mile an hour as we look at Superior Racing with Ken Muscatel. And he's in a very solid third, his best showing of the weekend here at Pearl Harbor. There it is, 154 for Tide Outrigger. 155 is Steve David, a little bit faster from second. Starts to close the gap. Here's the last lap, call it, Nick. Tide is out in front. Nate Brown, and there'd be nothing better for Nate Brown right now than to take this win and to prove himself against the T-plus. But look at the air intake of the Miss T-plus. Steve David continues to close it in notch by notch, but does he have enough in the final moments of this race to get him? They're going to go into the turn hard. Steve David has got to keep his RPMs very high to even stand a shot at it. Did he do it? We'll see as they come out of the final turn now. The checkered flag is about ready to wave. Nate Brown, his foot to the floor. He's trying to get every ounce of power out of the Tide Outrigger Hotel's boat. He is going to take the win, a big win, for Nate Brown in the Tide Outrigger Hotel boat. Second place to Steve David and third to Ken Muscatel. And I know they're going to be very happy for the Pete's Wicked Ale team. So three of the four boats complete. Heat to be Miss Sprint, the hometown boat, still suffering from that fire damage. Nate Brown being welcomed back to the docks by his pit crew, and we might say he gets a very traditional Hawaiian greeting for I, that I, I fine win. Like, yeah, Nate, that, that's enough, that's enough. <laughs> nice to be the guy on the inside, huh? It is, I'll tell you. It, uh, inside is always an advantage. We had a little bit left, but not a whole lot. A T plus engine treatment and Steve David. They're a fast little boat, you know? So I knew it was going to be tough, and... I'm really racing against him this race for that third place the national points wise. Mark Tate, congratulations. You, you locked up the driver's points thing earlier today and we sure hope Smoke and Joe's can pull it off from Budweiser. But it's going to be a bunch of little races here. T Plus is trying to keep ahead of Dave Vilwalk. I'm trying to keep ahead of Tate Plus and Budweiser's trying, trying to keep ahead of Smoke and Joe's. So it's a great race and we're glad we came out on top for Outriggers, Hotels, Hawaii and Tide. Well, they'll pull the tide boat out of the water, get it on the trailer, and start working again. And we've got more racing to go, and we'll be back to Pearl Harbor in just a moment. Some ominous storm clouds as we come back to Pearl Harbor as we look at the mountains of Hawaii, but that won't stop the racing. No, it won't. And Miss Budweiser has lane one with Chip and our T-plus in lane two with Steve David. He goes American Dream, international news. And on the outside, if he can make it, is Jerry Hop and the Miss Sprint. 
Now, perhaps the most important thing is the draw. They did not draw each other, Smokin' Joe's and the Miss Budweiser. And going into this heat, the Budweiser has a 321-point lead with this, this heat and the final left. T-Plus has taken a lead as we go down into the first turn here in Heat 3A. And there we go inside the T-Plus. Look at the shock that that boat takes as it goes through the turn. A good ride for Steve David. Nobody around him at the moment. He's got some competition off to his left side, but you can't see the rooster tails. There you see Steve David. He is in lane number two, so he's a little bit on the outside. The interesting race is back in second place where the American Dream and Miss Budweiser are battling it out. American Dream apparently not finding the speed that he had a little bit earlier on. No, but look at the speed that Steve David has found in the T-plus here at Heat 3A. We have to remind everybody that Steve David in this boat, the T-plus, won the event, the championship here last year. There you see the American Dream a little bit off the pace. Dave Vilwak, of course, has some good points going for him at this point. So he's mainly concerned with the way the Miss Budweiser is at this time. Well, now that's going to set up interesting. Look at the lead between the first and second place and the Budweiser coming up way back in third place. They might be having problems from that early problem in the first heat when they tore up the boat. They could have, and we had said at that time that that may play into the later races, but no problem at all for the Miss T Plus. Out in the lead, there you see the third place boat, the Miss Budweiser, Chip Hanauer. Not really familiar with that position on a race course. Normally, he is the guy that's setting the pace. This time, it's Steve David from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Very, very happy young man as he pilots that boat owned by Jim Harvey through the turns here in Hawaii. He's getting a great run. 157 miles per hour on our CDU lap speed board. A good ride for the T-plus. He's got every advantage going for him at this point, and he's taking it. The American Dream, interesting, because that was the boat that challenged some of the fastest boats in the field and was the fastest qualifier coming in. Looking ahead, now if the Budweiser maintains a third place finish here in Heat 3B, Smoker Joe could win and pull another 175 points off the Bud lead. It would be really be close going into the final. So at this point, both Dave Vilwak and Steve David riding second and first respectively are playing spoiler roles, if you will, because they're playing with those point totals for the two boats that are leading for the championship. Steve David takes the checkered flag, comes home a winner. Gee, that's got to be a good feeling in the last race of the season to get a heat win under your belt and i know that's good for the sponsors and the owners there you see pico's american dream in second miss budweiser third international news and the miss sprint did not start so steve david takes the win in the miss t plus there you see the boat coming into the pit area down there the water goes up all over and in some cases comes in a little bit here are the cumulative points for those boats that just ran in heat 3a 925 for the t plus on the day let's go down to the docks and steve david well if we make our way in here let's find out from the t plus driver steve david now steve you've uh, really tightened things up with that win yeah we sure have this is a uh going to be repeated last year where we won in the final and just kind of held back a little bit in the preliminaries and that time we wanted to see what a final heat combination was and I think you just saw what the final heat win's going to look like. Let's get out of Steve Montgomery in the Budweiser pit. Bernie, it comes down to this. If Mark Tate wins this heat, you're going to go into the final 120 points ahead of him. Yeah, and that's really bad and the reason it's really bad is uh, uh, that last heat, as you've seen, uh, as we just went out of the pits, uh, the temperature went straight to the moon. We took on a lot of salt water, and uh, so we were popping all the way around. So anyhow, that's one of those things that happens in racing. That's what salt water does, and we thought, sure, we had that handled, but somehow or other, we got salt water in there. So the points battle for the O'Doul's Eagle Snacks High Points Titans. As Mark Tate heads out, we'll be back. Dick Griffin along with Jen Hendrick and Steve Montgomery as we look at the boats getting ready for Heat 3B. And Smokin' Joe's in lane one, tied out Rigger Hotel, Nate Brown in lane two, Ken Muscatella, Superior Racing in lane three, Scott Pierce of the Sea Dew on the outside, and he's making a bid on the start to be the leader, Dick. He has got it going down into the first turn on this course. It is the Sea Dew Ron Jones Racing Team boat. It's a good run for this boat. As we said, it's their third real race, fourth time on the circuit. So they are very happy with the boat responding the way it has. Watch very closely, though. We'll see if he can hold on. 
as they come out of the turn. And it's going to be Smoke and Joe's with a slight lead, but now the other two boats have evened it up. And watch out for the tide. Tide started to get away from him, and Mark Tate immediately found a little bit more power in the Smoke and Joe's. He knows he's got to hold them off on the turns. That's where it counts. When we give the advantage of the shorter course to the inside boat, that advantage comes on the turns. If he can make a tight turn, he can hold his advantage to the short course. In this particular case, Mark Tate does just that. He holds off the tied outrigger hotel boat, but here comes Nate Brown again. Nate Brown driving the race of his life right now as he takes over the lead by a half a boat length over the inside boat, which is the Smoking Joes. And Dick, the Smoking Joes, has to hang on. They have to take first place here to get advantage within striking distance of the world championship in the upcoming final heat. Scott Pierce is now running third to these two boats, and the one boat that had some problems at the start was Ken Muscatelli is under power, trying to play catch up at this point. There's your third place boat. The Sea-Doo presents the Ron Jones Racing Team. Still a battle going on out in the lead, and I mean a battle not only for Smoke and Joe's at 148 against Tide Outrigger at 147, but also a battle of holding the Smoke and Joe's on the water during the turns. He's really having to battle for it. Look at Nate Brown literally shoots by him like a rocket a great job at driving we'll see if he can hold on to that speed i think nate knows he's got to get him on the turns if he's not holding the lead on the outside going into the turn he is not going to hold it coming out look at that as they go in deck to deck racing they've locked horns again today smoke and joe's again starts to take a little bit of an advantage over the tied outrigger hotel boat as they go into the turns again I can see Jim Lasser and the rest of that Smoke and Joe crew holding their breath now as a challenge is going to be mounted with a checkered flag in sight by the tide with Nate Brown, who swings a little bit too wide. I don't think he can catch him. We'll see because as they come down, there's only a boat length separating them, and the winner is Mark Tate in the Smoke and Joes. And here's your order of finish with Smoke and Joes now closing the gap by another 175 points in that battle for the world championship. A great day for one Mark Tate, a perfect day, if you will, in Hawaii. We'll be back to Honolulu in just a moment. All summer long on Eagle Snacks Performance Corner, we have covered many facets of the hydroplane. In this last session, we're going to discuss the propulsion of the Miss Budweiser. And it all starts right here with the turbine engine. At our dyno in our shop in Seattle, we can determine where the torque range of this engine is at what certain RPM. That RPM, we can adjust by our gear ratios, our propellers, the slip of our propeller. One of the tools that we have to meet that optimum power range of the engine is this reduction gearbox. We can change the ratio inside this box and take the engine RPM from 15,300 to get it to an optimum RPM for our propeller of around 11,000. Depending on water conditions and race conditions, we may change these gears and have as many as two or three different ratios set up for one race day. The final most important tool we have is the propeller. Depending on the pitch and the slip of the propeller, coupled with the gearbox ratio, we can give the engine in the optimal performance level we would like. On race day, we will swap out as many as five to six different propellers, as many as three different gear combinations, and numerous engines to try and find that optimum performance level in this budline.